get started, right? Okay. So uh, welcome. Uh, this is building cloud native microservices using Project Helidon session. And uh, we'll start with the legal stuff that basically saying that what I'm going to say today, uh, you should not use it to make your critical business decision. So don't trust me fully. Little bit about myself. My name is Dmitry Kornilov. I'm Helidon project lead. I'm working Oracle here in the Czech Republic in Prague. I'm also participating in Jakarta EE activities. I'm a member of Jakarta EE PMC. And here is my Twitter ID, so feel free to subscribe and post some updates about our products there. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today, what you are going to learn today, uh, I'm going to talk about microprofile. So if you've been here before, Ondra was talking about microprofile, so I guess that I will add a little bit more there, or maybe the same, I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about Helidon, uh, and uh, this is a slide section, it's very short, I have about five slides, and after that I'll switch to uh, my terminal, and uh, I will demonstrate how to quickly build microprofile application using Helidon. And this application is going to be a RESTful web service. Uh, it will use some health checks and we will create a custom health check. It uses metrics and will create a custom metric. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about basic and uh, advanced configuration, means how to configure your application. And at the end, uh, I'll demonstrate another flavor of Helidon, which is not microprofile, it's a reactive framework called Helidon SE, and uh, we'll build a GraalVM native image based on your application, talk about GraalVM advantages, disadvantages, and uh, why should you use it, why you should not. Let's get started. Microprofile, right? So, microprofile is a de facto standard for creating uh, cloud native APIs. So if you are doing microservices, you should take a look at microprofile. Uh, why? Uh, first of all, uh, I don't know how about you, but uh, I want the standards, right? Because when you use the standard approach, you kind of feel safe that it won't change in future, it will be supported. Microprofile is a de facto standard, and uh, many vendors support it already. Uh, it's developing uh, really fast, so since it was introduced in 2016, uh, they made 10 releases, and the latest version is 3.0. 3.1, sorry. It's open source, it's hosted at the Eclipse Foundation. And actually, a little bit of a history, so why MicroProfile was introduced. In 2016, Oracle said that it's not going to continue with Java EE anymore, so it's not going to be Java EE 9. So at that time, other vendors, Java EE vendors, like IBM, Red Hat, uh, Payara, Tommy Tribe, decided that we actually want to have some kind of new microservices-related micro APIs uh, because there is a demand on the market. And uh, they created MicroProfile. And the uh, first version of MicroProfile 1.0, it had only three APIs, so all three were Java EE APIs. It's CDI for injection, JSON processing for JSON processing, and the JAXRS for building RESTful web services. Now the latest version, there are 12 APIs. So you see that the progress is here. And uh, uh, they added quite a few more APIs like config, like health checks, like JWC propagation, REST client, open API metrics, fault tolerance, open tracing. And these are Java EE or now Jakarta EE APIs they support. So. Uh, that free, which I mentioned in version 1.0, the added JSON binding for JSON support. Right. Uh, here's a microprofile website. So you see that it got the Duke Award last year, which is great. 
And uh, here are a list of vendors, here are a list of participants supporting it, right? So it's, you see that it's quite supported now, which is important for the standard. Uh, there are some additional information here. It's microprofile.io, feel free to browse it offline. So uh, I started creating, uh, start talking about vendors. So we make, microprofile are just APIs, and vendors, they make implementations, right? So here is an official page with microprofile implementations in, it's in Eclipse Wiki. So uh, it looks quite ugly, but that's the Wiki page, right? Uh, here are versions of microprofile, and here are implementations which are past TCKs, right? So uh, you see that all the versions, they have more implementations. That's obvious newer version has less because uh, vendors kind of work, kind of work in progress there. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is Helidon, which is this one, uh, which is a microservices framework from Oracle uh, implementing microprofile. Okay. Let's come back to the slides. So, here is one sentence description of what Helidon is, and it's just a set of Java libraries for developing microservices. Why Helidon? Helidon is swallow in Greek, so this is how it spelled in Greek, right? And swallow is kind of small bird, some kind of fast bird, so uh, basically uh, we would like Helidon to be small and fast too, so it's kind of, you know, inspiration. Uh, how Helidon fits into the landscape of Java microservices frameworks. So here on this slide, I put some Java microservices frameworks, sorted them out from smaller to larger footprint, and categorized into three categories. And these categories are micro frameworks, smaller but limited functionality, micro profile based frameworks, which is what I'm talking now, and full stack. So basically, you can build everything with these frameworks, but footprint is quite large. So how Helidon fits here? We have two flavors of Helidon, Helidon MP, which is microprofile, and Helidon SE, which is a reactive framework. What's the difference between them? These are different APIs, so the API flavor is different. SE is tiny, it's reactive, it uses functional style, and it's transparent, we call it no magic, so there is no annotations, no dependency injection, no magic behind. So it's very kind of, it's Java, just Java. And MP, this is microprofile, it's a larger footprint, and uh, it uses all microprofile stuff, or java -E stuff, like uh, declarative style, dependency injection, annotations, and here I put even some java EE, Jakarta -E APIs which used there. Right, so, Helidon has his own website. Sorry, I'm showing you the GitHub repository here, make it bigger so you can see it. So it's open source, it's Apache license, right? So very permissive license, feel free to fork it, feel free to participate there. Uh, we have a website here, quite modern, looks like we have Parallax here, right? Nice. So uh, some features are listed here, Difference between SE and P listed here, this is basically what I was talking just now. Supported technologies, and what I was going to show is this um, community. So uh, if you would like to use Helidon or even participate in Helidon development, so just go to this page. If there are questions, we prefer to answer it on Stack Overflow. If you want to contact directly developers, we have a Slack channel, here is an invitation. We have Helidon FAQ, there are some questions and answers. Basically, this is what I'm saying now, right? I, mean, I think I've covered everything from there. Uh, how to contribute, GitHub, and we have a Medium blog with some articles, technical articles about how to build something in Helidon, announcement and these kind of things, it's quite nice as well. And we have Twitter for announcements. So take a look. If you want to participate, you're very welcome. Uh, What's more important, we have documentation here. So if you decide to develop something, documentation, documentation is quite nice. So for instance, we have some images here, we have some code samples here. It's ASCII doc based, 
And uh, there was a tweet from ASCII doc creator saying that, hey folks, this is kind of nice usage of ASCII doc. We are proud of it, right? Uh, we also have guides. And uh, I actually presented Helidon last year here on Geekon. Uh, and that time we had only two guides. Possibly we didn't have any actually, right? Now we have quite a few of them. And we are continuously adding guides here. Uh, guides is kind of a small guide to covering one topic like health checks in SE or health checks in P metrics and these kind of things. Uh, we think it's quite useful. And uh, actually, these two quick start guides is recommended, there is how we recommend to create Helidon applications. If you are new here, just go here, check out the guide, quick start, and use it as a template for creating your application. This is actually what I'm going to do now. So I'm switching my, uh, to my terminal. I already checked out uh, quick start application to save time. I'm not sure if Wi-Fi is kind of strange here, so I made it offline. So uh, here in this folder is my, oh, come on. Nothing is there, so I'm afraid that I will need to check it out, right? I'll just remove it. This is, it can't be, it's kind of strange. Oh, it is here. It is here. So it's, it's kind of somewhat delayed on, on the, you know, on the terminal, right? So uh, when you check it out, this is a standard Maven application. So nothing extra is there. So if you're familiar with Maven, it's just Maven application. So you can open it at any IDE. It doesn't require any plugin special things. So it works with IntelliJ, it works with NetBeans, it works with Eclipse. I'm using IntelliJ here. So here is POM XML, uh, which is quite simple and short and clear. So you see that we are using MicroProfile 3.0 here. We also have as part of Quick Start Support for Docker, so we supply Docker files to easy build uh, Docker image, and uh, application YAML to easily deploy to Kubernetes. I'm not going to demonstrate it. If you want, you can do it yourself easily. So what about the application itself? It's just a simple RESTful web service. You see that there is a grid application here, and uh, JAX-RS application, just standard. And there is grid resource here. And this grid resource has three endpoints. Uh, one endpoint just returns the greeting. It returns your greeting plus world. So if greeting is hello, it returns hello world. And the greeting itself is in the configuration. Standard microprofile config. Sorry, here. See, greeting is hello. Another endpoint uh, returning personalized greeting. So instead of world, it will say whatever you pass as a parameter. So like hello, Dimitri, for instance. And the third one allows you to change your greeting. So you don't like hello, we are here in Czech Republic, so you can just pass their JSON message greeting ahoy, and uh, it will continue using ahoy instead of hello, right? Let's just build it to see how it works. I'm going to use Maven package. Build is very fast. At least it's supposed to be. It runs some tests. Yep, we have it. And now we just run it. It produces the executable jar. Like Java jar target hit it on MP jar. So it's running now, let's just test it. I think I used the wrong window, but it doesn't matter. Let's just test it here. Um, I have some saved commands. So I use curl to localhost and the endpoint greet. 
and it returns hello world. And if I do personalized stuff, it will say hello Dmitry. And uh, if I do a put request, I mean changing greeting to ahoy, it's like that. And after that, I call personalized greeting. It will say ahoy Dmitry. So everything works fine. Uh, about the executable jar, right? So it's not a fat jar. It's what's called hollow jar. So if they look at the jar size, see it's here, it's only 12K. And all the dependencies are in the libs folder here, right? So if you want to take a look, it's here. There's quite a lot of dependencies, right? Uh, but the size is not so big. Let's just calculate it. It's 21 meg, right? So you have a simple application, simple web service with metrics, health checks, and all other stuff, uh, and the size is 21 meg. This is not so bad. And uh, the advantages of hollow jar, possibly you know that, that uh, these dependencies are not changing. Right, so only your application is changing. So you can set up your Docker build the way that it's layered, and one of the layers is your dependencies, unchangeable, and uh, the next layer is your application, which is changeable. It will make your uh, Docker build really fast. Okay, so that's about basic functionality. But out of the box, this is what MicroProfile actually says, uh, your application must be observable, so it should support, it must support, uh, metrics, health checks, right? What I'm going to demonstrate now is health checks. Uh, health check, we support both health check 1.0 specification and health check 2.0 specification. According to the first one, they must be an endpoint called health, which returns some health checks. And what health checks are? Health checks is just a probe of your node state. Uh, it returns up or down, and uh, uh, it's designed for automated systems, not for human operators. If it's down, automated system like Kubernetes will decide, decide what to do with your node, discard it, restart it, or it, it will decide automatically. Uh, Health check can contain many checks, and each of them return up, down, so you can have a database check, for instance. Uh, if any of checks is down, the overall status is down. So if your database doesn't work, then overall status is down, and your node has to be restarted or discarded. Let's just try it. I just removed this readiness. I'll talk about it a bit later. OK. So this is what's returned by default. So we provide in Helidon three health checks. Deadlock check, which is OK. Disk space check, which is also fine. And uh, it has some additional data, you see. So each health check can contain some additional data. And heap memory, which is always also fine with some additional data. Right? Uh, health checks 2.0 spec defines Liveness and readiness health checks. This is what Kubernetes supports. So we can do liveness, which is the same as I showed before, and uh, readiness, and the endpoint is ready, and there is nothing there. Right? Uh, of course, you can create your custom health check. So if you want to add health check functionality to your application, you can do it. And this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. Let's create a readiness health check. In order to do it, I'll create another class. I'll call it state health check. Can you see my screen, right? Okay, right. And you need to implement health check interface. And this interface has only one method which you need to overwrite. It's called call. Right, and uh, it returns health check response, 
which you can build and return up or down. Let's just make it that it returns down all the time for simplicity. I'm doing health check response and uh, I'm going to use named health check. It means that it will have a name. I'll put the name state there, right? And uh, to return down, you just need to do down. And you need to build it. That's it. Also, we need to mark it that it's readiness health check. And according to the spec, there is a special annotation for that readiness. And it's going to be application scope. Application scope. It looks okay for me. Let's just build the application and see. I just stop it and rebuild it. I'm going to skip tests to make it quicker. Looks fine. Now just, just run it and see what we have. I'm right. It's readiness health check, so I'm going to use a ready here. Look, we have our state check here, and it's down. Desired, right? Let's enhance it a little bit because returning down all the time is kind of lame, right? Let's just make it based on configuration property. So we are using microprofile configuration. And the uh, microprofile configuration says that your application must read microprofile config properties file by default, which I have here. And I add here application state down property, right? And in my health check, I will inject this property. And I'll inject it this way. Again, this is the standard thing. This is how microprofile works. I'm going to have a private string property called state. And uh, I'm going to inject. And I need to specify the property name from which uh, I need to take a value. There is a special annotation config property. And I'm specifying the name this way. And the name is up state, right? And here, instead of down, there is another method called state. And uh, if state, uh, basically, uh, as a parameter, we're passing true or false. True means that it's up, false is down. So I'm going to do a simple check. If up equals ignore case state, so means that if your state is up, ignore case, then service is up. If it's down, if it's anything else, then it's down, right? Looks fine. Let's just compile it and see how it works. Compiling now. Running now. Switching to another window. Down, as desired, because our property is down. Right? Uh, Microprofile config supports configuration layering. What does it mean that? It means that you can have multiple configuration sources and you define their order. And uh, uh, the higher order configuration source override properties defined in the lower level configuration sources. And uh, two sources are automatic. It's environment variables and system properties. So, and they have a higher priority than uh, microprofile config properties file. So basically what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass a system property to my application and overwrite their uh, down state to up state and see how it will work. I'm going to stop it. And here I'm going to pass up state up. But technically, it's supposed to overwrite the down value from their properties file, and the state should be up now. Let's just check. 
up. So this is how configuration layering works. Now, let's make it even more complicated. So uh, we actually need to restart the service to take the configuration property from uh, any of the sources. Let's make it dynamic. Helidon supports a feature called um, pooling strategies for configuration sources. It means that uh, you can, if your configuration source changed, your application is going to be notified that it's been changed. Uh, in order to do that, I will need to create a custom configuration. So here, when we start with server, uh, this comment actually says that uh, it will take a configuration automatically from MicroProfile config properties file, right? Uh, we're not going to do it. We are going to build our own configuration. It's config class. And I'm going to create it. Config, and there is a builder. And um, in the builder, I'm going to add sources. And first source I'm going to add is a file source. Uh, it should be static import, right? This one. And. Uh, uh, this is a configuration file. I pre-created it. I will show you in a bit. It's in the conf folder, and it's called mp.yaml. Let me just demonstrate it to you. Conf mp.yaml. And it has a state up here. I'm going to change it to down, right? So it will take configuration from there as a first source. And uh, as I said, we need to configure their polling strategy. And polling strategy is going to be watch. And let's just make it optional. Optional means that uh, application won't through exception if the source doesn't exist. It's a custom configuration, so now we need to add our microprofile config properties uh, file to configuration two. And in this case, we are going to use class path. We made some kind of mistake here. And mistake is here. File, not here, it's fine. Class path. And uh, class path is meta inf. Uh, micro profile config properties. It's correct? Seems fine, right? Okay, so we've got sources configured. Now we'll just build it. And now we need to pass it to our server. So instead of create, we are going to use builder. And it has a method called config where we pass our config, custom config. Uh, yeah, and we need to build it and start it after that, something like that. One more change. Uh, in our health check, we are using string property. It, now it's changeable, so we need to use supplier. Supplier string. And supplier this. And uh, here we need to do get. That's it. Now let's just make sure that we don't overwrite this property here. And just remove it from here. We have it down now, right? Uh, let's just build our application. Like, uh, no, 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 no. I'm running it, but I need to build it first. Yep. Now let's just run it and see. Down. Now let's just change it to applications running. Now let's just change it to up. I do my Vim here. And I'll change it to up. Done. Let's check it again. Down. 
down, up. It takes some time to propagate, right? It's not immediate. But you see that it's changed to up. It's caused by my change in the configuration file. So this is the dynamic configuration. That's it about health check. Now let's jump to metrics, right? Another cool feature, what metrics is. Metrics is just telemetry da data, right? Uh, you can measure different parameters. So uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, heap size over time, right? Or disk space over time. And uh, you can modify your application at custom metrics there. For instance, how many times some endpoint was called or how long it took to uh, execute some of the methods. So it's quite useful. And uh, there is a Prometheus open source software that you can use to collect your uh, metrics data. And uh, it can be used as data source for visualization systems like Grafana, where you can see nice graphs with stuff there, right? So that's quite cool. And uh, by the microprofile spec, metrics must be switched on by default, so we do have it. And uh, let me just demonstrate it. Is my service running? Yes. So uh, the endpoint for metrics is try to guess metrics, right? So let's just do metrics. Of course, maybe this is not the right sample. Um, yeah, here it is. So I'm just doing get to metrics endpoint. So what's returned? Some properties here, right? So these are metrics in Prometheus format. So this is how Prometheus format looks like. Uh, we also support JSON format, which is more human readable. And in order to get metrics in JSON format, you need to pass in the header accepts JSON, right? Which I'm going to do now. Here, here it is. Yeah. I'm not going to application metrics, I'm going to just metrics, right? Here it is. So we have a JSON file with two metrics, base and vendor. This is by the spec, by the way, right? And by the spec, base metrics, which is what should be supported by all vendors. So all microprofile implementations must provide this data, right? And vendor specific, this is what each vendor can provide. And this is up to vendor. So we are providing some gRPC metrics here. We are providing accounts of requests. We are providing some other stuff. This is what Helidon provides. And there is another metric called application metrics. So this is what you add into your code and it will appear there in application. By the way, uh, possibly you've seen already that there is an options request to the same uh, endpoint. I just do not application, but core metrics. And if you do that, it will return some metadata, metrics metadata, uh, basically a description of what this metrics is doing. So look, there are quite a lot of descriptions. So if you're not sure what metrics is doing, just the options request there and you will see it, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a custom metric to my application. Uh, it's very simple, it's annotation based. I just go to my uh, resource, and uh, for default message, I will add counted metric. Counted metric is just measures how many times this endpoint is called. And I'm going to add some additional uh, data here, like name. Uh, name is going to be, let's say, a default count. Oh, it's not default, right? It's something else like this. And I'm going to add description. And I just do something like this, right? Sorry. Uh, and uh, absolute true. What is absolute true? Uh, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Absolute true. What it means, uh, with absolute false, which is false by default, your metrics name will have a full package name, means this uh, before that. Absolute true eliminates that, so metrics name will be just default count, right? 
and for personalized greeting, I will use timed metrics, right? And it measures without anything. It measures uh, different timing metrics, so uh, how long it took to execute your endpoint. Looks okay, let's just rebuild it. Yeah, done. Now I'm going to run it. And let's take a look at our custom metrics. I'm going to use application, right? Hmm? Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Now we have application metric. Uh, oh yeah, I did options request, right? So it actually returns some metadata of my custom application metrics. And actually you see that this is absolute true, right? So default count is the name I'm provided. And this is the second one. Look, it has all their package name there, right? And my description is here too. So that data I provided is shown in if you do options request. Uh, let's just do get request. Here is the matrix, always zeros. So uh, to make it not zero, let's just do some stuff, right? Call our service, and this is personalized greeting, and we do also normal one. And let's just do it again. And you see that I called a default message seven times, and uh, here are some di data of timing of the second endpoint, which is personalized greeting. So here it is. That's metrics. Okay. So that's it about the metrics. Let me take a look what else I want to demonstrate to you. I think that that's it for Helidon MP. We have 12 minutes left. That's just enough to demonstrate you Helidon SE a little bit. So what is Helidon SE? Helidon SE is the reactive framework, uses absolutely different APIs, different style of APIs. Uh, I've seen on Twitter that people were saying it's similar to Go, uh, but we expired uh, by Express.js from a JavaScript world, right? It has three main components, reactive web server, config, and security, and uh, reactive web server supports health check metrics and tracing. Actually. Uh, in Helidon, we are trying to add observability to every single component we develop. So Reactive Web Server has it, we have gRPC Server, which also has it. We are planning to add some database stuff, Reactive Database Client, it's going to has, uh, have it too, right? Um, Helidon SE is quite fast. So uh, comparing to, this is basically, uh, this is not my measurement, this is from public source, sources here, right? So uh, Helidon SE application has a very fast start time. And uh, according to che uh, Tech Empower site, right, again, this is not my measurement, but data source is from here. Uh, and this is a measurement of requests per second. Higher, better. So Micronaut is better than us, but we are quite close. But drop these to spring down below, right, which is great. Right. So what I'm going to do now Again, I'm going to use a quick start application, which we have here for Kiridon SE. And uh, I already checked it out. Let's see, if, will it work now or not? Kiridon uh, SE is there, and I'm going to open it in, uh, in IntelliJ. Yeah, existing project. Right. So 
This is Helidon SE application. Again, we have here POM XML, which is different from MP, different dependencies, right? But small and nice too. And inside, it's completely different. Which is just a standard Java SE application. No annotations here, no dependency injection here. So to start your server, you need to configure everything yourself. So a lot of control, which is what we like. Right? So you need to set up login, you need to create your configuration, you need to create your routine, which is here. You need to manually add metric support, you need to uh, manually add health check support. Right? You, everything you do, you do it manually. No magic is here. Right? And uh, the grid service looks different too. So again, you make your routing. And uh, for each route, there is a corresponding handler. You create a handler for that. Something like that. So very easy, right? Uh, I'm going to compile it and run it just to make sure that it works, right? Maven package. Supposed to be. Так. Something didn't work, and it didn't work because we have our MP application. Let's just do it again. Helidon SE is not micro profile. It supports metrics, and yes, the output is the same as micro profile. We are trying to make it consistent. Done. Let's just run it. Java jar target Helidon SE. Right, so it's running now, and uh, let's just do our greeting stuff. Greet. So see the same thing. Everything works. So functionality is totally the same. Now let's just jump and see the application size. Right. So target. So application size is similar to MP, but let's take a look at dependencies. Only 5.9 megabytes. If you remember, MP was 21 megabytes, right? So it's much smaller, right? So your application is much smaller. It's actually, and actually it's faster than MP, right? And uh, the next step I'm going to do, I still have seven minutes, it should be okay. I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to build native image, GraalVM native image from Helidon SE application. Why from SE? Because simply we don't have it for MP yet, right? Uh, we are working on it now, planning it sometimes next year, possibly first half of the next year, we will see. Um, native image, it has some advantages. So basically, this is a native executable. And uh, we support two modes. Uh, first mode just creates native executable for the operating system you are running on. So I'm on Mac OS, it will create executable for Mac OS. And the second model is Docker image with Linux executable inside, right? So uh, suitable for uh, if you're on Windows, for instance, right? Or uh, if you would like to deploy your Docker image somewhere else. Convenient. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate the startup time, right? So uh, to see how fast your application is starting on JVM and as a native image. In order to do that, I will make a slight modification to my code. Uh, so it just finishes, just I'm commenting that, when the server has started, right? So that's the startup time. So when server starts servicing your requests, it's already working, right? So I'll just finish it here, and I'm going to use standard Linux time utility to measure the time, right? Where is my terminal? Here it is. Is it running? No, it's not running. And it's SE. Uh, first, I'm going to um, skip tests. I'm going to build it using just normal JVM. So we will see start time time of a normal JVM application. Time, Java, jar, target. 
target helidon SEGR. One dot seventy five seconds. One dot eighty eight. One dot seventy four. So on my environment, it's usually between one dot a half and two seconds the startup time. Right. Now let's build a native image. In order to do that, there is a special profile which we provide called native image. Right. It's building it now. Unfortunately, this build takes quite some time, so it takes about two minutes. So I have five minutes left, so two minutes it will be building. And during these two minutes, I will just talk about advantages of uh, native images, right? So using native images in your application, it's a trade-off. It has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. So native image is great for applications which require very short startup time, like functions, right? So you run it, it's almost no delay, we'll demonstrate it in a bit, uh, and after that you dispose it, right? Uh, another advantage of GraalVM native image is the image size. Imagine that with your application you need to take uh, all the JVM, right? So it's quite big. And the native image size, it's quite small, I will demonstrate it in a bit, right? Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we are creating usually not functions, but long-running services, right? And for long-running services, running it on JVM is actually faster because JVM knows information about your runtime environment and optimizes your application on the go, so it becomes optimized, right? Uh, Graal VM uses static optimization and it doesn't know about the runtime environment. So it's fast, but JVM for long running processors is going to be faster. So uh, this is your decision. If you need advantages of Graal VM, go for it. We support it. If you still want to stick with JVM because for long running processors it's faster, then stick with JVM. Okay, it's done. So uh, let's take a look at their uh, um, start time. Of course, I need to use time, right? Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. Sometimes it displays zero, right? So there is a huge difference. So uh, native image starts almost immediately and uh, your JVM starts between one and a half and two seconds. And this is a simple application. Uh, Weld is there, right? CDI is there, so at startup time, it actually goes through your class path and check the CDI annotations and this kind of stuff. It takes some time, right, unfortunately. So that's advantages of native image. Uh, let's take a look at the size. I have quite a few backup images in case we don't have time. Uh, so 19 max. So this is not too bad. So if you remember, uh, MP application uh, is 21 meg with all the dependencies. And SE application, all the dependencies is about 5 max. So, but you need to take your JVM with you, right? So it's 5 max plus JVM size, big, right? Here is only 19 max. That's it. So that's the advantages of native images. Right, I guess I finished. Let me take a look here. Maybe I forgot something. No, I didn't forget anything. Let's go to the slides. Scroll VM, demo, questions and answers. Right, so I have one minute. I'll check some questions on that system I have. So you refresh it. Hmm? No questions. Do you have any questions? You can. You can set up your Jenkins job, which builds native image and runs some functional tests, definitely. Sure. Sure. 
it's it's just a special profile, right? So basically, it does everything, including tests plus builds a native image. Yes, you can. Yep. More questions? No questions. Thank you very much. We've done. <laughs>